Hi there, I'm Peter Millard and this is 10 Minute Workshop, where 10 minutes in the workshop is never enough. In the workshop this week, while well, I'm taking a break from spraying everything white, uh, including the workshop, uh, and instead I'm going to talk to you about my Festool MFT, or multi-function table. Uh, it's just a table with holes in, isn't it? Of course it is. Coming up next. So it's pretty rare for a week to go by without somebody mentioning this guy. They tend not to mention it by name because nobody, not everybody knows what it is. Um, uh, a lot of people say in the comments, oh, that table, oh, that crosscut table, that saw table, that bench with the amazing drop down rail. Um, and the questions usually revolve around, what is it? Did you make it? How can I get one? Was it expensive? Have you done a video about it? Uh, short answer, uh, no I didn't make it. Yes, you can get one. It's an absolutely bog standard, off the shelf Festool product. Um, you can't get this particular one anymore because this is a, an older version. There's a newer version called an MFT3. Um, I haven't done a video about it because there are a ton of videos on YouTube about it already, but the questions keep coming up. So I'm just going to do a quick video about this uh, to show you why I like it, why I think it's worth it, uh, especially in a small workshop. So let's do a whistle stop tour around this. Uh, it's an aluminium frame bench with a custom Festool aluminium profile on it. It has steel legs that fold up underneath it. I've got them uh, out of the way at the moment because it runs in at the same height as my benches. Uh, this particular one is an older model. It's the Festool MFT 1080. It's approximately 1200 four foot long and 800 uh, deep um, with a bit of fancy footwork, the fence can be pushed back a little bit, which gives you a 700mm crosscut, which is pretty useful in a, in a relatively small bench this size. Uh, uh, the top is perforated by 20mm holes on 96mm centres, and this grid is absolutely square. It is absolutely 100% square. Uh, the uh, aluminium profile around the edges uh, effectively has a T-slot, so you can put clamps or anything else in at the top or the side, and that's how the uh, guide rail and the guide rail receiver effectively are also mounted. Uh, these are removable uh, and they bear against the stop. So when you get this, you can set it up completely square. The hinged rail drops down and there is absolutely no play in that at all. And that, this little pin here on the receiver engages in the T-track on the rail and there is absolutely no slop or movement in there at all. Over time, because this is steel and this is aluminium, making that re repetitive movement will actually wear the rail away a little bit, uh, so you will get a little bit of slop. Uh, you can actually move the rail up or down to avoid that, or just fit what's called a slop stop in here, which eliminates that movement. Now, because this top has a perfectly square grid of holes, it's pretty easy to align the fence to the holes, a little bit of scrap wood to make sure they're the same distance apart. And then you can align the rail with the holes and then you know that that rail is cutting absolutely square. And once it's absolutely square, it's pretty trivial to knock up a little jig and make sure you can get that rail back square again, just in case it gets knocked sometime. Perfectly square. Now this dead square rail is not just useful for cutting, it actually has another trick up its sleeve. Now I've mentioned this before in a previous video, sort of in passing, uh, and rather than repeat myself, I'm going to go and have a quick dig through the archives, uh, find that clip, and we'll show it now. Two little bench dogs. 
in there. This runs up against a stop. That comes down and that is square. There's, you know, there's, no, there's no arguing about this. There's no debate here. That is square. I know it's square because I set it up that way and if you set it up right, it's square every time. And the beauty of this is that you can just edge this over. I've got a pencil mark on here, center line where the dominoes need to go. I put my domino machine on there. I can just tap this into place so the foot is right on that pencil line and I can cut my mortises and I know they'll be exactly squared, dead on that line to the depth that I've set them. Uh, and you can just boom, 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 all the way across. Um, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And then at the end of it, you just lift it up, take that off, and you've got your bench back. Uh, for a small space, they are absolutely fantastic. And I, uh, uh, I, I don't regret spending the money on this at all. As I say, I paid a lot less for mine back in the day, but uh, anyway, let's crack on. I've got, a, I've got a fair few to do. So I'll fast forward with this because it's not that, not that interesting watching me do it, but. Uh, So are they for everybody? Well, no, of course not. Uh, they're no replacement for a traditional workbench if you want to do a lot of hand tool work or you need something with a, a lot of mass for hand planing and that sort of thing. Uh, that's not what they're for. Uh, they are principally for working on sheet materials that combine very well with a Festool track saw. Uh, uh, as a cross-cutting workstation, they're absolutely superb. And the best part is, as well as being capable of accurate and repeatable cuts. You just fold everything up out of the way uh, and suddenly you've got your bench back. It's not a big lump in the middle of your bench uh, like uh, my old radial arm saw was that uh, this replaced. Um, uh, they are expensive, they're over £500 new for the latest version. Uh, if terrible things happen and somehow I lost this through fire or theft or whatever, I think I'd probably scour the used uh, adverts and, and try and get a, a used version of this because I do prefer it to the to the newer MFT3. Um, but the MFT3 is is lighter weight, so if you are using it as a portable bench, then it's probably uh, possibly a better a better option for you. But that's me. That's how I use my Festool MFT, the older 1080. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that whistle stop tour around its capabilities. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it out amongst your friends, and do consider subscribing. If you haven't already done so, well, hey, just check back on a Friday when there's always something new up at noon. I'll see you then. Take care.